we're being joined by Luis Vierenga, lecturer in international relations, Baltic Defense College. Good evening, sir. Delighted to have you with us. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we, we probably should start with defense, right? I mean, of course, there are all these various initiatives, uh, you know, sort of that um, the Free Seas initiative sort of is comprised of, but I would say that perhaps the Ukraine uh, aspect is the most important one at the moment. Um, did uh, President Zelensky manage to, uh, to sort of achieve anything? Further uh, aspect of re-solidifying the majority, but not all, of the members of the Free Seas Initiative and their overwhelming support for Ukraine's EU and NATO membership. So I think that that provides a lot of visibility uh, in a country because it's uh, taking place in Vilnius right now that's been one of the staunchest supporters uh, of Ukraine ahead of the Washington summit and also ahead of, uh, in, in the same summer, the uh, European parliamentary uh, elections. So I think that it's a clear sign that um, support for Ukraine needs to continue. Um, just a couple of days ago, uh, Joseph Borrell made the comment in his address that uh, it, it's almost inevitable that the possibility of a war uh, spilling over from Ukraine onto EU soil. So I think that this is something that uh, is needs to be taken seriously and is taken seriously by most of the, uh, the, the European but uh, especially the 3C summit. And as you can see, Zelensky has gotten a lion's share uh, of the attention, even signing a bilateral agreement with the Latvian president uh, ahead of the summit. Now, uh, the interest in Ukraine is, is obviously uh, not only to help them, but also the, the reconstruction of Ukraine. Uh, will that uh, deflect from maybe some of the key goals which was linking the, the, the north of Europe with the south of Europe? An interesting question. Um, I, I'm sure that uh, a lot of people don't want that to be the case, but it might be the case, quite simply speaking, because there's a war going on and uh, the vast majority of those countries are also part of uh, NATO's eastern flank. So uh, in, in that sense, I think that there won't be too much uh, frustration if that is in fact the case. Uh, a lot of the focus going on will go to Ukraine for, for two reasons. The first is that, um, you know, Ukraine's war is Europe's war, uh, and they're holding Russia's back from, from going to the west uh, or, or north, northwest. But um, the second is that once this war ends, I guess depending on how it ends, one of the key foreign policy aspects, which has already started to happen, is really integrating Ukraine into the West, which means deeper integration if they achieve the status of an EU member state uh, and eventually NATO, which is, I guess, a whole different uh, topic of discussion. So I think that there's uh, enough appetite to let that be somewhat sidetracked uh, due to the importance uh, and urgency of the situation in Ukraine. Right. Further inclusion is definitely on Ukraine's agenda, uh, but um, I wanted to go back to 2017 when the uh, Free Seas Summit was held in Warsaw, and this is when Donald Trump was also visiting. Uh, and I wonder if he becomes president, and of course it's a big if, um, what can we expect for the region? So oh, that's, that's also an interesting question, and living in uh, the Baltic states, of course, I, I, I am frequently asked that question. And... Um, Two points I want to make on that, that is, if we see a second uh, Trump administration. One, uh, there might be, or there, there likely will be a lot of unpredictability and a lot of um, positions that are taken that may not be what you would expect from uh, a Republican president because Trump is sort of a, a new brand uh, of Republican, if you will, as are his America First uh, supporters in the U.S. Congress. But I do think that um, if you look back at the former presidency before Joe Biden, when Trump was president the first time, uh, bilateral security in Poland and the Baltic states has actually increased under a Trump administration. Um, whether or not he wants to pivot towards Asia in terms of military or just continue the trade war, I think that there's a lot of uh, bipartisan support in the U.S. to pivot towards Asia. Plus, the Middle East is currently in a lot of turmoil, to put it mildly. And then there's the case of uh, Ukraine and what the rest of European NATO members are going to uh, do to 
bolster or continue to bolster um, their defense. So the Washington summit is a couple of months away from uh, the next U.S. presidential lunch, uh, election. So it will take place under Joe Biden. But with Trump, I do actually think that you will see a lot of support for uh, what, what he may or may not think is a good intention, but that would be ending the war immediately, which will likely embolden Russia, because if you enter into an agreement with good faith with them, uh, there's really no reason to trust Vladimir Putin or anyone uh, in his circle for keeping that. So I think that even if there's something that may look good on paper to an audience that's uh, further west of Poland and the Baltic states, there's still a line of caution. I think that the thinking that even if this problem is solved, solved, relatively soon it will likely come back again and that's why i think the urgency is, is still there so we can expect maybe the unexpected uh hoping for the positive in terms of uh, sending more troops for bilateral commitments um you already see japan as if we go outside of europe trying to uh get ready to embrace themselves for a potential trump uh second term right and um the, I think the, one of the issues with uh, Sally talking about this is funding for the three C's. Of course, Mr. Trump, he uh, offered a uh, billion dollars in funding for, for three C's. Not, uh, I, I don't know how many cents of it were actually seen so far. Um, but uh, there was a, a, a an article in Emerging Europe today uh, where it was suggested that uh, the countries of the three C's should also be investing more of their own money in these uh, private, uh, public uh, uh, investments and also maybe pension funds and things. So if we, if we believe in the future of, uh, of the region, then we should be betting our pensions on it. What do you think of that? Economist, but uh, that certainly is uh, a, a point that Trump would probably make on his own in speeches on, on X, formerly Twitter, and likely through his uh, State Department should he win a second term. And that speaks to kind of two, two key issues for Trump. One, he's a businessman, so everything's transactional. Uh, USAID, then pull your share, however much he thinks that they should. Uh, but second, it's also a way to, and it will happen, I think, less for three C's initiative, way more for, for NATO, uh, just because I think most Americans probably haven't heard of the three C's initiative, unfortunately. But um, I think that that would be more uh, in line with speaking to a voter base. Um, but I do think it is in the United States' best interest to have a strong Europe, uh, to, have, to have a strong NATO, have a strong Europe, a safe and secure Europe. And I think that anybody, regardless of who it is, who actually sits uh, in the office of the President of the United States will figure that out, um, regardless of the people that are that are around them. And that might be overly optimistic, but um, that's one of the things that I can say on that. But the second is, especially in the Baltic states, uh, there is a genuine sense that uh, spending, you don't need to tell people here to spend more on defense. They are happy to do that. They're happy to make all of the different targets. So the Three Seas Initiative is way less known than than is NATO. Um, so that might be somewhat of a, of a political sell, but infrastructure is important here and the quality of life is important. So you see that with the Baltica uh, in the development of the Baltic states. So I don't think that there is a hard road ahead uh, for continuing development. But the final point I'll make on this is that I do think that you know, military uh, and, and security was not an initial part of this. It was mostly energy and infrastructure, but now it's some, the discussion is somewhat shifted due to the ongoing um, war in Russia being waged against Ukraine. Well, uh, Luis uh, Virenga, it's very uh, interesting that you joined us and thanks very much for your views on the three C's. Thank you, sir. Pleasure. Thank you for having me.